What are some of the secrets realtors use to sell a house? It's The Real Estate Show. Welcome to The Real Estate Show. My name is Rick Naples. I am the owner broker of Zone Realty LLC. You zone your home. Secrets to selling a house. There are a number of them. Realtors, as their profession states, are experts in being able to market a home, solicit buyers, and get the home sold. But what are some of the secrets or techniques that are used in order to accomplish that? And can you use those secrets yourself without a realtor? Let's take a look at a couple of them. First of all, let's talk about photographs. You know, there's an old saying that says a picture is worth a thousand words. Photographs have become even more important now than they ever were before when it comes to selling your home. And here's the reason why. Statistically, most buyers start to look at a home on the internet. Now, what do they look at on the internet? They look at the pictures. So the photographs become really important in order to entice a buyer to want to go the next step further and take a look at that house and potentially maybe be interested in making an offer on it. There are a lot of techniques in taking photographs that are very important and realtors have been trained, at least most of them, on how to do that. In some cases, if a house is a high valued home, in other words you're looking at very high ticket price houses, the realtor will hire a professional to come out and take the photographs because the photographs are the first thing that a buyer is going to see. And it's real important to make that great first impression. Now let's talk about what pictures do you actually take? Well, everyone wants to take a picture of the house itself, usually from the street, or from a right or left angle, or whatever picture of the outside of the house may present it in its best form. But that's not the most important picture. The important photographs are those that make the house unique. Something inside the house, maybe the remodeled kitchen, maybe the very attractive sunroom, or perhaps there's a grand room or something like that. When realtors put their photographs together, they try to tell a story about the home in pictures. And they usually lead off with a photograph that's going to make a buyer who's searching on the internet stop, look, and want to click through more of the pictures to look at the house. So one of the techniques that realtors have been using is instead of using the picture of the actual house as their very first photograph, they'll take a picture of something from the inside of the house that's appealing to a wide range of buyers and then have a picture of the house down later on. Sometimes if it's a smaller home and there isn't a great feature to take a picture of on the inside of the house, they'll take a picture of something in the yard, maybe a garden area or the way the home has been landscaped and use that as a lead picture. But the idea besides just the picture of the home, is to try to have that very first one or two pictures be able to capture the buyer's interest and make the buyer want to look through more of the pictures about that particular home. Another secret that's used, pricing the house. Now I've talked here on The Real Estate Show many, many times about how you price a house and how you look at other houses that are similar on the market and come up with a price range or a price that you feel most buyers are going to be comfortable with to get those offers on the home. But what is the number? 
There's all kinds of analyticals to look at when it comes to a number. But you have to remember the way things are searched for. You know, nobody searches for a home that's $299,999. Nobody searches for a home that's $198,88. You know, or a house that's priced at $401,000. No. The search bans, as we call them on the internet, are usually based in the even tens. In other words, 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, and so on. Let me give you a for instance. If a house is going to be priced at $399,900, you don't want to do that. You're going to price the house at $400,000. And here's the reason you do that. Not for the extra 100 bucks, but basically because the way the search engines are set up is people are going to look for a house, if they're in that price range, between, say, four and 600000 Well, if it's priced at three ninety nine. 900, the people looking for houses between 400 and 600,000, never going to see that house. For people that are looking for houses up to 400,000, they may be able to see it. So pricing bands is another thing you need to consider. One of the other secrets that I use all the time is doing heavy research. Researching what's going on in the marketplace and what's happening as far as home prices are concerned. You know, pricing a house becomes an art. You want to price it in a range where a lot of buyers are going to have interest in that particular home. You don't want to price it too low. You don't want to price it too high. So you need to do the market research. And in order to do that market research, you need a lot of different things to look at. And there are a lot of tools out there, a lot of websites to look at, a lot of comparables to look at. But one of the main factors in pricing a home is experience. And that's something realtors have that the regular seller does not. Let's take a look at this little presentation, and I'll be back to talk a little bit more about some of the insider realtor secrets when it comes to selling a home. to marketing a home, there are a number of different tools that a realtor will use. And one of the more popular ones is using social media. Now, social media is a great way to be able to get the word out that a particular home is up for sale. But then again, it has to be used in a professional way. You can't just post pictures on social media and let it go at that. You have to really know how to target buyers that are looking for a home in that neighborhood or in that price range. So there's a skill that's involved. And everyone has a, for instance, Facebook account or an Instagram account or a Twitter account or something like that. 
but if they don't know how to properly use it as far as marketing a home is concerned, it's just like posting regular pictures. People are going to look at it and go right by and look at something else that's interesting. So it's really important that a realtor that uses social media has taken courses and been instructed and learned how to use it to the best advantage of the seller to get the home sold. Now there's a couple of other things that get involved when a house goes up on the market. There's a tendency for sellers to seek out or work with realtors that may not be familiar with the general area. They're from outside of the area. Or they may decide to list their home with a person that has a real estate license that they know through a family member or maybe even a family member of their own. When it comes to selling a home, you have to keep in mind that the house now has become a product to go on the market that needs to be sold or shown to the widest amount of buyers possible. And sometimes who you pick to represent that or do that, the realtor you work with, needs to be a match to accomplish that within that area. So just doing business with your uncle or your aunt because they're a realtor might not be the best choice. We say in our business that you should interview. If you're going to have a major project done around the house, you usually get some quotes or you'll interview some of the vendors to do that work and then you'll choose the one that you feel gives you the best value for your money. You do the same thing with a realtor. You might want to interview two or three realtors and then make a decision on the one that you feel is going to do the best job in getting your home marketed and getting it out there. And that leads me to the next subject, a subject that's called networking. Now, everyone who wants to sell their house figures they're going to show their house to maybe somebody who wants to buy it. So they might put an ad in a newspaper, or they may post a picture on their Facebook page, or perhaps use something else to get the picture out there. But what they don't have that realtors usually can provide is a network of buyers and a network of realtors that are working with buyers that are looking for their home. So as a result, that networking tool becomes a really powerful tool that realtors use that the average seller doesn't have or hasn't established on their own. Now, how do realtors have that network? It's not something that's given to them. It's something that they've built up over the years that they've been in business and the contacts they've made while they've been in business marketing homes. That's what they do. One of the other things that I'd like to talk about that is kind of a secret is the idea of using video. Now video or virtual tour presentations are something that is a very delicate art. There are a lot of shows that are on television and some radio blogs and whatever that use the art of presentation in order to entice buyers to want more information about a particular home to get their interest so they may want to come take a look at it. Video or virtual tours is a great tool, but they have to be done professionally because just like I mentioned in the beginning of this show, photographs as well now as video are the things that buyers are looking at. So if someone just runs out with a video camera and just does a quick little video that doesn't really tell the story of the home or get that interest, may not be as successful as either the realtor or the seller would hope. Let's take a look at this and I'll be back with some final thoughts about some of these seller or realtor secrets when it comes to selling your home.
talking here on the real estate show about secrets to marketing a home or realtors secrets when they're looking to market a home. And I've just gone over a number of different things. What I want to talk about and additionally here is something that becomes really important when you put your home on the market and that's accessibility. Now what do I mean about accessibility? Well, your house goes up for sale and it's now become a product on the market. And there are many competing products. There are other homes, either in the neighborhood or general area, that are up for sale. And there are some homes that may have features or a price similar to yours. You want to make your house accessible. Now, does this mean you need to throw open the front door and put a sign out front, let anybody who wants to come in, come in? No. What I'm talking about with accessibility is making your home available to be shown to potential buyers. Now, some people have decided to go on the route where they'll try to sell their home on their own without using a realtor. Okay. One of the biggest problems with that is you got to be home to unlock your door to let people in your house. You got to be home to talk to the buyer when they walk in the door. Buyer wants to see your house at six o'clock in the evening during dinner time. You got to be home in order to show the house. You have to interrupt your life. Most of us have jobs to go to, so we can't be there 24 seven to show the house. See, this is one of the things that realtors are able to offer people who want to sell their homes. The realtors can control when the house is going to be shown make it accessible to a wide range of buyers and do that with as little disruption to the seller's life as possible. And they do this through screening and scheduling showings. One of the techniques is they'll get a key from the seller and they'll put an electronic lockbox or a lockbox of some sort on the home put the home on the multiple listing service so that only licensed realtors with qualified buyers can schedule appointments to go look at that particular home. And they can show the home with the seller's permission when the seller's not there. In fact, that's probably the best scenario. One of the many reasons why people hire other professional firms rather than doing things themselves is to be able to keep that decision and the emotional process at arm's length. Let someone handle the negotiations based on my wishes without me having to be there uh, being involved in it face to face. Accessibility becomes one of the more important factors because if the house can't be shown, if buyers can't get into the house to look at the house, it's not going to sell. Let's take a moment to look at this final little presentation and I'll be back with the final word. This is the part of the real estate show I call the final word. It's my final thought, my final comment on either the subject of the show or perhaps something that's going on in the market area or in the real estate industry. Today I was talking about some of the techniques, some of the secrets, some of the things that realtors do when they market a home that comes up for sale. I want to talk about viewing the house. And I've mentioned this a few times on the real estate show. You know, I call it the buyer's eyes. We live in our homes. We make our lives in our homes. We raise our families in our homes, our pets in our homes. We get pretty used to our house. We know it because we live there. Unfortunately, what happens over time is we become what I call house blind. 
In other words, you don't see some of the flaws anymore and you don't notice some of the things that a buyer might notice when they're going through your home. The technique that I like to share with sellers and I've used it for years is what I call entering the front door and where do your eyes land. That's a simple technique that's basically coming in the front door or main entrance to the property and within the first few seconds, what do you see? Do you see anything that might make you hesitate as far as wanting to see more? Is there a lot of clutter around? Is there something that's not repaired? Uh, you know, is there peeling paint? Are the floors all scratched up? Is the furniture all messed up? You know, are the rooms overstuffed with large furniture? Is there a lot of clutter around? And so on and so forth. You want to do that practice or that exercise of coming into the home and feeling like you want to go look for more. Realtors are experts in walking through homes. They do it every day. They see a lot of homes. They can help give the seller some ideas on what they can do to try and make the home appealing within those first few seconds of a buyer coming into the home. It's very important to try and capture people. In other words, they come into the house and they want to see what is it that's around that next corner. What does this house has to offer and what does this house have to offer that fits my needs and my lifestyle. So it's really important that you take a look at your home through the buyer's eyes. My name is Rick Naples and this has been The Real Estate Show. I thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.